Okay, so this is a solution presentation for problem I, triangles. So in this problem, we're given a, a picture like this, uh, triangle, triangular grid with some lines existing and some lines not existing. And our goal is to try to count the number of triangles appearing in this grid, which is a, a classical puzzle, but now we want to do it algorithmically. So let's say for simplicity that the dimensions of the grid, it's an n by n grid. It, uh, and so in this one, we have uh, you can find four triangles count pointing downwards if you look carefully. Uh, you can find this one, this one, this one, and then this big one. And similarly, you can find, if you look carefully, eight triangles pointing upwards. Uh, you have this one, this one, this big one, and so on and so forth. So in total, there are 12 triangles in this picture. Okay, so how do we solve this? So here is a small uh, example in grid. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through this uh, grid uh, row by row and then column by column. And when we are at a given point, what we're going to try to compute is the number of triangles which have this point as the lower rightmost point. So like for this point, we would like to figure out that uh, the number two because there are two upwards pointing triangles with this one. So no, for now we're only counting upwards pointing triangles and then to count downwards pointing triangles all we do is just we turn the picture upside down and then the downwards one became upwards pointing and we just use, do the same thing we did. Okay, so how do we then count the number of triangles which has a given lower right point? So what we're going to try to do is as we keep this thing uh, we're going to keep, so when we are at this point, one, one important, two imp very important parameters are how far does the line going up diagonally extend and how far does it extend to the left? So at this point, we see that this extends for four points, one, two, three, four, and this extends to three points. That means that the possible triangles, like without looking at edges going in this direction, the possible triangle si uh, sizes we could have is one, two, and three. Um, and now we just have to figure out which ones of these actually exist, we, which of these uh, forward pointing diagonals actually exist. And keeping these things computed as we progress through the grid is very easy because whatever it was here, we have already computed that and here it's just one more and similarly whatever it was here, it's just one more and if this thing didn't exist then it's just zero up here. So keeping these updated is easy. And similarly, we can, like when we process these uh, points, when we process this point, we, we, in the same way we compute that this thing points up uh, one, two, three steps, and this thing points up two steps, this thing points up one step. Uh, so what we're going to do is, we're going to uh, keep track of which ones of these, uh, are, which ones of these base points are still active with respect to our current point. So, uh, as w when we are finished with this point, uh, this point becomes inactive because it only extended to this kind of this diagonal. Uh, so, so when we after we process this point, this this thing becomes inactive because it, this this diagonal can't be used to form a triangle anymore. So, like when we are at this point, what's going to look like is this one is still active because this one goes all the way up to, you know, it could match assuming like everything else exists. This, the current point. Uh, this one is still active, this one is not active, this one is still active. So then the number of triangles with this as its lower right point is the sum of you know, these zero one indicators for what, what, what's active in this range, which is the previous three points, where three is just a minimum of three and four. So it's two. So there are two triangles with this as, it, as its lower right point, this one and this one. So computing these range sums we do, uh, is a, cl a classic problem. This is solved by a Fenwick tree or something or a range, some kind of range queries. And then to keep track of which ones are actually active, this is also very easy because when we process this, this thing, for instance, we just make a note that, oh, whenever we are done with this thing, this, you know, initially it becomes active, and then we make a note that, ah, when, when, when we have processed this thing, we should make sure to turn this, turn this thing off. So we, put it as an event to process 
as we, you know, after we are done with this vertex. And that's about it. So as you go through this grid, there's n, n squared vertices in the grid, and these uh, Fenwick uh, uh, or range query operations take logarithmic time, so we end up with a time complexity of order n squared log n.